couple important points there. Uh, late, um, May Day was born in the United States, in Chicago, uh, when the leaders of the movement for the eight-hour day were put on trial, and four of them were executed uh, after violent protests uh, in, in 1886. Later, the Socialist International proclaimed that in solidarity with those fighting for a shorter work week, at that time the work, work day was about 16 hours, uh, they proclaimed it International Workers' Day. But after World War II, uh, when the witch hunt was on, when the Cold War was on, and the anti-communist hysteria reached a fever pitch in the United States, if you celebrated workers' rights, you were automatically considered to be a communist. And if you were a communist, you were an ally of the Soviet Union and thus considered to be a fifth column. So May Day, in the tradition of this militant labor movement, uh, was driven out of the memory of the of the U.S. labor movement and out of U.S. society. Here we have a situation where 10 uh, percent, less than 10 percent, it's really about 8 percent of the labor force is now in unions compared to 1946, when this hysteria began, when the number of uh, unionized workers was about 35 percent. And as a consequence, wages are going down, benefits are going down. Uh, you, you have today, on May Day, in Virginia, 400,000 workers are going to lose health care access because they're going to be driven off of Medicaid, and 140,000 of those will be their children. Uh, and CEO pay is now 399 times greater than that of the average factory worker. So every $1,000 a worker makes, the CEO is making $399,000. So we see these class divergences happening as the labor movement has become increasingly weakened in the United States. But as your report said, uh, people are taking matters into their own hands in spite of very vicious anti-labor laws and anti-union busting campaigns by bosses, by employers. Uh, workers are starting to organize again, especially young workers.